We welcome you inside of Loving Good Arena on the campus of McEachin High School in Powder Springs, Georgia. Joel Hillsman, Mark Edwards, and Lewis Preston in our SUV TV courtside seats as the Thanksgiving shootout continues. It is the headlining McEachern Indians coming in at 4-0, riding a four-game winning streak. Well, technically, a 36-game winning streak. And they may fare monsoons and their season opener. Let's just cut right to the chase. Sharif Cooper on one side, Josh Christopher on the other side. Mark Edwards, what are we in for? This is about to be a show. Uh, Josh Christopher is basically what I call a rock star in high school basketball. Um, Sharif Cooper is arguably the most uh, decorated high school ball player in the history of Georgia basketball. So this is going to be a game. And I might add, he's never lost in this building. Josh Christopher and Mayfair, they need to realize they're in Georgia. You guys realize the refs weren't out here, so they got away with some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Coach Preston, your thoughts on this contest? I, I mean, this will be the first time I put my eyes on Josh Christopher, so I want to see what all the hype is about. Uh, Mark was over here super excited. Sweating. Sweating he was so excited. For me, uh, I just go back to this. I want to see another great basketball game like we saw uh, here early on in the first game. The second game here was great. And I'm looking forward to this opportunity to uh, call this game with both of you and seeing arguably two of the best guards in the entire country. Josh Christopher going to Michigan. Sharif Cooper going to Auburn. It should be a show. Let's check the lineups now. First for the visiting Mayfair Monsoon out of Lakewood, California. Head coach Tony Davis, he's in his 13th year, and he comes in with a record of 261 wins and 98 losses. Number five, Elijah Shahid, a senior. Number 10, Ryan Bowers, a junior. Number 13, Josh Christopher, a senior. Number 20, DJ Brown, a senior. And number 23, Dior Johnson, a sophomore. Shahid, Bowers, Christopher, Brown, and Johnson for the Mayfair Monsoons. For the McEachern Indians, it'll be number 20, Elijah Wiseman. Number 24, Randy Brady. Number 10, Bobby Moore. Number 32, Keith Williams. And number two, Sharif Cooper. Brady, Moore, Williams, Wiseman, and Cooper. For the McEachern and Indians, head coach, Mike Thompson. Georgia versus California. Coach Preston, I'm going to go ahead and get this out the way for you right now. Yes, I've got plenty of nuggets to drop on our national audience. And for these people in Georgia, I'm going to educate them on California as well. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> That's what we do. We want to make sure that they are fully aware of what they're walking into when this tips up here in just a couple of minutes. The McEachern Indians will be in white, white tops, white bottoms, and they've got blue numbers and Vegas gold trim. We are waiting on the officials. But a little subtle thing I want you to remind, if you're using your media guide, all of the McEachern numbers are incorrect. <laughs> because the GHSA outlawed their new uniforms with the Wii greater than me on the back, so they had to get new uniforms. I told you I'm about dropping knowledge, Mark Edwards. Where they do that at? I, I don't understand. I, I don't Thomas understand. Thomas and Georgia. I don't understand. I don't understand a lot of high school basketball things that go on nationally. You have states where teams are not allowed to travel outside their state Michigan. to play basketball. Um, after the, the season's over, kids can't play in, what is it? It's not Dicks anymore. Uh, the national the Geico. Game, the Geico National Championship game. I'm so confused as to why, as an adult, you would limit a child's experience in life. These are things that help young men grow and develop. Why would they limit them? What, what is the harm? If there's no harm, there's no foul. But once again, we are not talking about the young men in between these lines, we're talking about adults outside of it. It's, it's one of those things, Mark, and that's why I made the comment I'll do some education on California because I'm from Georgia. I'm there in Georgia. Everybody thinks I'm just Georgia. I have to educate Lou all the time on national things. He's finally coming around to the DMV and the level of basketball that they 
I just wanted to see your facial shot, expression. Shot fire. Major shot fire. Shot, shot fire. fire. All right, all right. Man, when I was in Notre Dame, I had an extra crib in D.C. <laughs> But no, just it, it, it's, I think some people get wrapped up in those two words, Mark. High school. Yeah. But I think when it comes to athletics and especially basketball, basketball is the sport where you can travel the most. You can travel the most. You don't have to take as many people with you. You can play more than one game in a day or more than one game in a trip. But, you know, for whatever reason, limitations on life sometimes with standardized associations. Uh, do those things. So we are still waiting on the refs. Both teams now have decided to join back out in warm-ups. I heard what's even crazy is that they cut off people coming inside. Oh, I, I've not heard that. It is a yeah, full house what, inside of Loving Good Arena. Really? That's what I heard. They said it's supposed to be a line outside. Yeah, there's a line outside. There's still seats in here. I know. Well, still That's, seats in here. and Everybody can't be on that Mark Edwards, though. I mean, you're supposed I, to get 200 seats per game from what I heard. I don't wait online, and I'm not paying to get in no high school games in the state of Georgia anymore. That happened uh, years ago. That don't happen no more. Sitting with royalty, I guess, <laughs> now, huh? <laughs> Take a look at our crowd shots. The baselines are full, the reserve sections. On a basketball black Friday, also on SUV TV holiday hoops giving. So, you know, you've got your dual threat of hoops giving and Thanksgiving shootouts. I know this is special because you got Quanto Martin down in the corner over our left shoulder. That's my brother right there. That's, that's one of the better people yeah. in the game of basketball overall. That's somebody that really cares about the kids, cares about the game, and he's serious about this. More importantly though, Mark, will speak his mind and speak the truth with the different issues yeah. going on in the NCAA and college basketball right now. Yeah. Dr. Regina Montgomery, the principal of McEachern, is in the building as well. She, she's got a busy day. She'll leave here and go, you know, this is McEachern right out through that luxurious tunnel up into that beautiful press box for the McEachern Indian football state playoff game. So a busy day here at Powder Springs, Georgia, on the campus of McEachern High School. I, I just want to know why you've never invited me to the press box. I have not called that game a football game in McEachern. It's been three, four years oh, now. Okay, so we didn't know each other. Okay, all right. So, uh, wait, 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 wait. You forgot about that other squad not too far from here that I think is going to win a state championship? The Marietta Blue Devils? The McEachern Indians. You think so? Dude, the winner of the football team is going to come from the right side of the bracket. Grayson is at Lowndes tonight. North Gwinnett is at McEachern. Of those four, somebody's going to win it. Marietta's not going to win the state of Georgia. Okay. I love Harrison Bailey. I love Richard Morgan and what he did, especially what he did with Oscar C. Smith in Virginia. I love him. The right side of the bracket, who comes out of that is going to win it. Mm. Because Calquit is not there. Because if it would have been Calquit and Marietta, then I would have had some fun with you. <laughs> <laughs> Harrison Bailey, I love it. Albert Gilbert, I love him. But uh, it's, it's either going to be McKeecha, North Gwinnett, Lowndes, or Grayson. And the little birdie already told me that if Lowndes wins the state, get ready for some postseason opportunities for Lowndes. I got, I'm full of nuggets today, man. I got them all. I got some nuggets for you. Uh -oh. Check out all the McEachern alumni lined up on the wall from the undefeated team of last is that, year. Is that I'm like talking coral, every last one of them are here. Oh, I see a That's coral. Love. I see Bree. We got Q's here. Bab Jet. Babatunda Akimbola. Yes, sir. That's love. That's culture right there. You know, these them guys love this school. They love the experience they had here. And I'll give you a, here's a conversation piece. In my opinion, I think McEachern High School over the last Three years has probably been the most successful high school in the history of Georgia basketball. I don't think we've ever had a team ranked in the top five for three straight years ever in the history of Georgia basketball. 
Can y'all guys? I mean, I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to give you that, too. But I want you to look at that banner that starts all the way on the far left. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Which, which one talking about it? Phyllis? Yeah, Phyllis. Yeah. 2013, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17. Uh, Those girls. are the, the girls. Yeah. Yeah. Well, boys basketball. I'm talking I about know. a national ranking. But still, yes, McKeechan yes. has a school, though. This is a college. Well, see, no that, school. That's, what, a school that's what I'm oh, saying. But in, two, in 2012, Phyllis went 33 wow. and 0. Okay, they went 33-0. and They finished number two in the nation behind St. Mary's and did not go to Dick's because they didn't get an invite. We don't talk about that. 33-0. and And all five of those players in that starting lineup, Pashy Roberts, Taya Cooper, uh, uh, Dominique Wilson. So I'm, I'm going to take that one on the head because I needed to make that phone call, and I did, and I apologize. I thought it was a done deal. That's just a phone call for me. Yeah, because St. Mary's Phoenix went because they played and won the Nike event. Oh. Really? It, it's, it's, and didn't play McKeechan there. Some yet. of it is a phone call away, man. St. Oh, yeah. Francis got in a few years ago, and that was a phone call. They had no idea. St. Francis had as many ranked girls in the country, had, was undefeated. But I don't want you, you want some of Angel Russell? Angel Russell's about their life. I don't want no parts of none of these girls. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an old man. You know what I'm saying? In the young man's world. I'm 50 years old, man. And the broadcast I just look good. <laughs> before the jump just ball good. has just went all off the rails. Hey, man, we, we filling in right now. So we, we are. We but can pretty much do whatever we want to we, do. We went from zero officials earlier to five to now to zero. Yeah. This, yeah. I could come up with a lot of thoughts on that. Ooh. I'm not, but I am. Yeah, you got the sweat towel. Yeah, because this is going to be fun. He's they're, trying to, they're trying to limit my fun right now. I'm ready for it. He's sweating more than John Thompson. John Thompson the third on the sideline of Georgetown. Without, without the Luke on a Seca sweater on. Damn, <laughs> yeah, boy, I tell you. You know, what? you know what we haven't touched on? We haven't touched on super sophomore D.R. Johnson. Well, I, I was trying to work that into the broadcast. Oh, you gonna work? You, you, that was your nugget. That was the nugget. <laughs> I stole your nugget. No, you just steal it. You Can can't. I'm, you can't steal. Go ahead and talk about him. You ain't. Listen, I got the nuggets, bro. You got the nuggets. I got the nuggets. All right. I'm C to shining C now. Mmm. Mmm. I love Georgia. I love the DMV. I love Chicago. Huh? It might have. Oh. He did. <laughs> oh. Josh Christopher has not committed to the University of Michigan yet. He is still wide open. The rock star is in the building. The word travel fast, doesn't it? <laughs> word does travel fast. We have a national audience. You got to remember that. So there's a lot of dudes in Cali right now I'm ready. watching this. All I got to say is this. When you have somebody at the floor level, the player himself come over, that's when you know you're in a big time. Yeah. Big time environment. They on the phone. They said you committed online. This is an urban event. This is some of the best time you're gonna have in your life. An urban event. What's better than a what's better than an urban barbecue? With drunk family members. Especially at Thanksgiving. Can we get the rest, please? We ain't going to get no rest. Game. Can we get the rest, please? It's going to be a minute. Going? Can we get this thing going? They can just pass out shirts at this point. What is it about Josh Christopher that you've seen over the course of the last few years that has made him? My brother. He's special. He is a rock star. He has his own style, his own swag. He's powerful. He's been good at every level that he's played. I remember watching him as a freshman play 60 and under EYBL, and he was elite back then, and he's still elite. He's just special. He's a gamer. He'll dunk on you, he'll hit a three on you, he'll defend. And you know, he does all that with a smile on his face. I've never seen that kid having a bad day. And that's what I can appreciate when I watch guys like him. All right. This is what we do at SUV TV. Mark, get at the Eddie right quick. Eddie Johnson, the head coach of the Farrell Panthers, is going to join uh, Coach Preston and I. 
as we await the referees to start here. Joel Hillsman and Lewis Preston. SCV TV's coverage of McEachern and Mayfair. Coach Johnson, man, thanks for taking a couple of minutes with us since we have them with us, man. I uh, appreciate you having me. All right, Thank talk you. about that victory over Trinity Christian, man. You guys were able to. They kept hanging around 8, 9, 10, 11 points, and every time you wanted to pull away, they came back, and then a big 14-3 to three run there in the third quarter, third, fourth quarter kind of put it away. Yeah, uh, I tip my hat to the coach of Trinity Christian, man. They were a very well coached program. Uh, as far as we go, man, our, our defense, man, we was just lacking towards the stroke, towards the stretch. Uh, we played spurts of excellent defense. We was able to go on that run, but then our rotation's not there. We're not closing out properly on the ball. It's all things that we got to emphasize when we get back to practice, man. Coach, one of the things that really impressed me, and this is the third time I've seen the young Roman son, just talk to me because one of the things I always look at when I'm evaluating a young man on this floor, how he impacts winning, and he doesn't even have to score. Right, right, talk, right. Talk to us a little bit about him. Roman son is the heart and soul of this team, man. Like uh, every college coach that I spoke to about him, I told him, like, without Roman, you, there is no Thero. You will never hear Thero's name if it weren't for Roman Sun, man. He, uh, he's able to, he's, he's just a complete floor general. He can control the tempo of the game. He's the most vocal person, even though he's the smallest on the court. He's not afraid to get in any of my players' faces to make sure they get the right thing, do the right thing. But uh, as far as seeing the floor, I told him, like, when we came out of middle school, Roman was scoring like 26 points a game. And I had to ask him, literally ask him, tell him that I need you to be a facilitator for my program. I got pieces around you that's going to make you look good as a point guard. But if you can facilitate and run my floor, the sky's going to open up for you. So he's brought into the uh, situation of uh, facilitating. He always looks to pass first, get everybody involved. Uh, he just runs the floor well. Uh, again, heart and soul of our program. Another thing that really stuck out to me, you know, I saw Cameron Fortson, Rashawn Frank. You really have a four-headed monster on your team. Uh, and a lot of teams aren't blessed with that. How do you get these guys to share the ball? I mean, the way that they pass the ball, the way that they're unselfish on the break, I mean, the way they penetrate and kick. You know, one of the things we talked about that maybe one of the things could be your Achilles heel is your perimeter shooting. You were knocking down shots tonight. It's all seemed like it's coming together. I know defensively you talked about some adjustments you need to make, but talk to us about that, how all four of those guys and the rest of the team are sharing the ball together. All right, that's been our uh – it's been a work in progress all season. That's one of our goals that we wanted to check off. Uh, we told them uh, I don't think many teams have that much firepower, you know what I'm saying, to go off and play on a regular basis like that. So it's having those four players. I told them if they were able to share the ball, they would make the game so much easier for the team. Uh, of course, all of them have their, their mindsets that I got to score, I got to score, but they're slowly starting to realize how good we are when we play as a team instead of as a five individuals. Our motto is, a closed fist to the mouth, punch to the mouth, hurts a whole lot more than an open hand slap. Wow. But as soon as they buy in, and they are buying in slowly but surely, and they're realizing what they can do as a team. Last time I heard that was Coach K. Ah, well, a very the, good man. The gold standard. I thought I made that up right now. The gold standard. <laughs> All right, Coach Eddie Johnson, the Thero man, congratulations, and also congratulations on that 2A state championship last year. I appreciate that, year. man. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Thanks for having us, boss man. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Thank you. Right, no. Coach Eddie Johnson, the, the Thero Panthers. And now we are ready for basketball here courtside. So we'll take a quick break and have the tip in just a moment.
Joe Hillsman, Lewis Preston, glad that you're back with us inside McEachern High School and loving good arena in our SUV TV courtside seats. I gave misinformation earlier. I said that Josh Christopher had committed to Michigan. That was my error. He has not. The prep work is extensive on my end, and that came out of my mouth incorrectly. I pride myself on being correct with the information, so I do apologize. He has not committed to Michigan. Coach Preston, it is McEachern and it is Mayfair. And since we had that break, I will run down the starting lineups one more time. First, for the visiting Mayfair Monsoons. It would be number five, Elijah Shaheed, a senior. Number 10, Ryan Bowers, a senior. Number 20, DJ Brown, a senior. Number 23, D.R. Johnson, a sophomore. And number 13, Josh Christopher, a senior. Shaheed, Bowers, Christopher, Brown, and Johnson for the Mayfair Monsoons out of Lakewood, California. For the McEachern Indians, the starting lineup be number three, Cam McDowell, number 24, Randy Brady, number 10, Bobby Moore, number 32, Keith Williams, and number two, Sharif Cooper. McDowell, Brady, Moore, Williams, and Cooper for the McEachern Indians who come in on a 36-game winning streak they're currently 4-0 this season, and the head coach is Mike Thompson. Mayfair comes in. This is their season opener. They're 0-0, zero and, zero, and they're under head coach Tony Davis in his 13th season with 261 victories to 98 defeats. Sharif Cooper is committed to Auburn. Josh Christopher recruitment is still open. And I bring in Lewis Preston and Mark Edwards again as we get ready for the tip as I do see one official, but I also see 3,400 people inside of Loving Good Arena. Easily, standing room only. That's Georgia basketball though. I keep telling people around the country, we run basketball around this country now. We run basketball. Y'all better hold on. Well, it's gonna be very interesting because you got a Georgia, California, a Georgia, California edge and the thing about it is, for those of you nationally, yeah, we're based in Atlanta, but Coach Preston, well, oh, he doesn't have it on. I thought you'd sized up your championship ring <laughs> that you had. They're, they're in the safe deposit box. Safe deposit box. Nope. Uh, Mayfair, a California Division I Southern Section Division I A school, and they like to get up and down the floor with transition and tempo. McEachern is a 7A Georgia school. A public school, and as I mentioned, they are the 7A state champs. First state championship in boys' history. The girls have five state championships. All of them have came since 2012, and they had a 33-0 season in 2012. Oh, we got a couple reps. Oh. And I know both of them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. We got referees in the crowd. Yes, literally. Literally in the crowd. <laughs> literally. <laughs> and they're both official referees, for real. Literally. So I, I've been talking about the whole duck season thing. I want to see the top players guard the top players. I'm wondering if Sharif Cooper and D.O. Johnson are going to match up head to head. I'm, I'm curious to see this. I know Sharif wants that smoke. Let's see what happens on the other side. McEachern in white, Mayfield in black. We are underway in the tip one, and D.R. Johnson has it. As they move right to left, as you view it, Mayfair. Christopher, left wing three. It is no good. Rebound comes off, ripped off by Williams. McEachern on their opening possession with Sharif Cooper across the timeline. Worked on defensively by D.J. Brown. A drive, Cam McDowell hit with traveling. And this is going to be very interesting. The first few minutes, it's almost like a feeling out process here with both of these teams. Once again, Christopher with that shot, looked like it was going in. It's going to be very interesting once they get into the flow, uh, the cream that rises to the top, as we like to say. Johnson goes baseline, floats it, hit the side of the backboard. Cooper with the rebound, and they'll push it in transition. 
Cooper right to the corner, and he's worked on defensively by D.J. Brown. So he pulls a corner three, in and out. Rebound, hit the floor, picked up, goes up. Randy Brady rolled off. Fight for it. Brady underneath, up, and a foul. So the McEachern Indians will try and get their point, first points of the day at the free throw line from Randy Brady. And once again, we're talking about, you know, we got the three headliners here, but once again, there's going to be some other guys that are going to have to step up on both these teams in order to get that victory here. Brady first free throw is no good. Ryan Bowers, the senior, picked up the first foul, his team's first. Brady's second free throw is no good as well. Long three in and out. No, he ripped down the glasses. Johnson back up. No, fight for it underneath D.J. Brown. They kick it back. Johnson to Brown should be three second. They don't call it. Long right wing three by Shahid is good. Elijah Shahid, a three ball. Well, you know what? That offensive rebound, stick back, stick back, miss. Get it back out, kick it. Normally right in the rhythm for that three-point shot. Ball is lost over there. Fight for it and come away with it. Into the contest now, number 10, Bobby Moore for the McEachern Indians. Number 10, D.R. Johnson to Christopher. Down the lane, layup is no good. Rebound is ripped off by Moore. Moore head up now, gives it to McDowell. McDowell going to go baseline, spin cut off by Brown. The shot is no good. They fight for the board. It goes out of bounds. Both teams still look unsettled. You can expect this here the first couple minutes. Pat Jim, I mean, for Mayfair, it's their first game of the season. For McEachin, it's their fifth. Cooper goes baseline up, and it was foul as he drew the foul on the shot. Sharif Cooper We'll be going to the free throw line. The Gatorade, Mr. Georgia, player of the year. 2018, 2019, he's going to the free throw line. Sharif has a knack for what we call paint touches, and he's definitely a really good free throw shooter. That's something that he does on a regular basis. He can pad his stats all day long getting to that free throw line. What do you think has been the main thing that he's worked on from last season to this season with all the accolades he has received? The range on his jump shot. You're going to see him take a lot more threes from at least two to three feet, you know, outside the regular three-point line. And he's making them. Steal. Cooper comes away with it. Cooper pushing it on the break. Cooper contacting his foul. He'll go to the free throw line. Forcing the contact, Sharif Cooper. And he'll go to the free throw line after making his first two. But that's what you have to do right there when you get out in transition. You've got to put the pressure on the referees getting back. He does a great job. Keeps the ball in his left hand the whole way. Goes up with the left. Once again, getting to the line to shoot two. His ability to use his left hand should inspire a lot more players, trainers, coaches to really talk to their kids, you know, also about, you know, using that offhand you know, to score the ball. You know, the only other person in the pros read that plays like that is Kyrie Irving. Well, I'm just going to tell you this right now. If you're going to play on the high division one college level, you better use both hands. Yeah, Christopher. Oh. Out of bounds, it will be McEachern basketball. Yeah. So, Christopher unable to get it going from the field right now. Cooper quickly back this way trying to catch Mayfair sleeping. He drives. The left is no good. Williams on the board. He puts it up, and he's fouled. So Mayfair now racking up the fouls. Fourth team foul on the Mayfair Monsoons, and at the free throw line, Keith Williams. Well, one of the things that Mayfair needs to do is get back in transition defense. They kind of chilling. Sharif will definitely take advantage of that. His ability to get into the middle of the court is something you don't see a lot of. A lot of times you see guys pushing the ball. It's always like a sideline fast break type of thing. Mm -hmm. But I also felt like that limited you as a point guard if you can't get into the middle and make decisions going right and left. Sharif Cooper definitely has the ability to do that. One of the things I would do is probably try to push Sharif up even further to getting the ball and making him have to work 90 feet as opposed to him. Denying him a little more. Yeah. yeah. Williams missed both free throws, so McEachern has a team, four of eight. There's a drive, no. Brown ripped down the rebound. He put it up and a whistle. So 
Sharif Cooper, 4 of 4 from the free throw line. And as a team, McEachin is 4 of 8. Brady has missed 2 and Williams has missed 2. D.J. Brown now going to the free throw line for the Monsoons. D.J. Brown, the senior. First free throw is good from Brown. Even ball game for all. Substitution now. Wow, well, made them both. Yeah. Cooper on the attack, wasn't there. Step back, now spins it over. There's a drive that's knocked away from behind. Brady had it knocked away from behind. This is going to be a long game for defenders. Trying to play him one-on-one. -on -one. Cooper is the trigger. Gets it in now to Bobby Moore. Moore, two hard dribbles and he's fouled. So Mayfair racking up the fouls. That's their 15 foul. I mean, until they can get down and sit down and move their feet and defend, that's exactly what I'm going to keep doing. I'm just going to keep loading up and trying to get to the paint, as you talked about earlier, Mark, getting paint touches and forcing the ref to make those foul calls. Cooper working, yeah. foul, 16 foul, and that one will be on Christopher. So this is how the game is going to go. They get into the one-on-one -one in the first quarter. They'll be in the bonus for the rest of the half. There's not much need to take a lot of jump shots. They're going to be shooting free throws for the next 12 minutes and 42 seconds on every foul. Split them for Cooper. Brown now up ahead. To Shahid. Shahid has the only field goal of the contest. He hit a three from that right wing to cut to Christopher. Back out now. Here's Johnson. A long two. Johnson good. Your Johnson a jumper. Nice little inside out pass from Christopher to Johnson right there for that deuce. McDowell drives. He's fouled. A foul will be on the pass. It does not matter. Mayfair, Mayfair now is in the bonus with their 17 foul. McEachin will shoot the one and one and shoot free throws the remainder of the half. Four minutes, 16 seconds to go in this first quarter. The one thing we have to talk about with Josh Christopher, he's not going to force his offense. He's the kind of guy that can explode for 20 points in a quarter at will. So he's going to take his time, get his team in the flow of things, and he's going to let the game come to him. And when it comes to him, it's going to be exciting. McDowell made the first one and makes the second one. 7-7 seven, seven ball game, and McEachern does not have a field goal. Christopher goes up and scores. Josh Christopher on the drive, his first field goal. That's too easy right there for him. Brady goes up. He's fouled, and will go to the free throw line. Ryan Bowers has three fouls for... Mayfair, and now D.R. Johnson picks up his second. Christopher has two as well. D.J. Brown has two. Brady, free throw. Front iron, no. They didn't say that was a shooting foul? Okay. <laughs> Brady struggling from the line over three. I thought I saw him put his hand up for two. Brady, free throw, no good. Chased down by Moore to McDowell. Now to Cooper. Set fire. Three on the way. Bottom. Sharif Cooper, a three ball. First field goal, made field goal for the McEachern Indians. Christopher in the corner. Open three. Gullery, no good. Rebound off to Cooper. Cooper now going to push it in transition. Sharif Cooper to the front of the rim. Layup, no. Follow more, no. Follow more. It was knocked away. Brady comes away. They fight for it. Passes it out to McDowell, and they'll retreat it. McDowell now almost had his cookies taken by Christopher, who's chasing him. 
McDowell down low. Moore dunked it home. This game's about to turn up. This game's about to turn up any minute now. Back-to-back -back possessions with made field goals for the McEachern Indians. Open. Johnson. Three. No good. Caroms off. Brady gets the board. Coming up on three minutes to go in this first half. First quarter. Blocking foul call on Rodney Gilroy. At some point, Mayfair might have to go back and get in the 2-3 zone or a matchup or something. That'll be a nightmare for them. I'm just saying. Ninth team foul called on Mayfair, and that is the second on Rodney Guillory. I think it's smart that McKeecher is not forcing up a bunch of threes. Randy Brady is struggling from the free throw line. Up, count it, and the foul on the drive, Dior Johnson. You had that little lull right there. They thought it was two, but it was really a one-on-one. -on -one. Johnson gets all the way down the floor for the layup and a potential three-point finish. Randy Brady struggling from the free throw line, 0 of 5. Here's Johnson, his first trip to the line. It is good. He completes the three-point play the old-fashioned way. We're in a 12-12 ball game. Just under three minutes to go here in this first quarter. Cooper across the timeline, worked on by Brown. Blows right by him, into the paint, layup. No, and he'll go to the, guess what, the free throw line. Tenth team foul called on Mayfair. Foul called on Rodney Guillory. That's his third. Now, I, I'm just watching the body language of Coach Tony Davis. I don't know how many he brought with him, but, man, they've got a multitude of fouls, and we've only played almost seven minutes. Go to the bench. Here comes James Claybrooks, a senior, will check into the contest. Number one for Mayfair in the Jordan brand threads. Cooper, free throw, is good. It's kind of like the crowd's on their hands right now waiting for something waiting. major to happen. Christopher across the timeline, picked up by Cooper. This is what I love about Sharif Cooper. He's down for all challenges. Step back, Christopher forces it in and out. No, he didn't follow it. He got his own board. He goes baseline. He slashes it off. They spin it back to Johnson. Johnson whips it in the corner. Christopher, a corner three. No good. He is off today. Now here comes Cooper. Cooper in transition. Cooper on his way below the free throw line. Drives. No. Follow. No. Out of bounds. It will go to Mayfair. Randy Brady is having a slow day. That's all we can say right now. He's having a slow day. I like his activity, though. I do. I love uh, it. I like his activity. He'll, he'll, he'll turn around. Absolutely. Johnson looks to make his move and now does and floats it. Short, no rebound. Chased in the corner. Jumper, Shahid, no. Fight for it. Rebound, long lead. Passes intercepted by Christopher. And now they fight for it. And they're on the baseline. He comes away with it. Brady. And a timeout call. It is a 30-second timeout. The 30-second timeout call by the McEachern Indians and head coach Mike Thompson. So as we wait for this thing to really start to take off a little bit here in regards to both of these teams, what are some of the things that you're seeing early on, Mark, overall? The fact that no one can stay in front of Sharif Cooper. Um, with Josh Christopher, I think once he hits one jump shot, I think that'll be a thing that revs him up. Also with D.O. Johnson, we're not able to get anybody to stay in front of him as well. So it's going to come down to, a, it's going to be an instant third and fourth quarter, I believe. I think with the delay in the game starting and so forth, I think that's only that's slowing these kids down. It's about to turn up. Out of the timeout, Bobby Moore bounces underneath. The shot was blocked at the rim. They tip, they fight for it, and now D.J. Moore comes away with it. D.J. Brown, excuse me, in transition, running up off the window. Johnson, I like the way Dior Johnson now is on the attack. Five points in the contest. He'll go to the free throw line. He's one of one on the day. Dior Johnson, originally out of the state of New York. Okay. I wanted Mark. Okay. But played his high school ball where last year? 
Well, he played. He was at Finley. Then he left Finley, and then he went to he Nevada. To to the, that was all yeah, I was saying. Yeah, you know. Then he's supposed to go to uh, Fairfax, and Fairfax messed up, so now he's here. But I mean, he's well traveled, well documented. This is fourth year playing varsity basketball, um, and he's only a sophomore. So this is a special kid. Rattled home a three out of the corner. Randy Brady, his first made field goal, his made, first made shot of any kind. 17-14, McEachern a three-point advantage. D.J. Brown is off. Cooper rebounding out of the guard spot and surveying as he comes into the full court with a left-hand dribble. He's going to go all the way, lay up, no. They can't get the rebound and the follow. They fight for it. And we'll have, will we have a jump ball? Indeed, possession will stay with the McEachern Indians. I mean, I know he's missed a couple layups. I just like how he's probing and getting down even lower and getting to the basket with that left hand. We call this mouse in the house. Clay Brooks trying to guard Cooper on that left box. He had his back to the basket. It's out of bounds, and the possession will stay with the McEachern Indians. Here's Cooper again. Cross-court pass. Open. Brady. Three. Bottom line. Wow. Randy Brady with back-to-back -back three balls. He's warming to the task now. And the McEachern lead extends out to six under 35 seconds. Christopher, dunk. Rock star. Now right to his jump stop and dunk the basketball home. Rock star status. That's what we came to see. There's Cooper. Worked on defensively now by Clay Brooks. Final 15 seconds. Cooper. Makes the move, drives the contact, up and in. Count it, and the foul. It's a score and one more for Sharif Cooper. This is Georgia basketball. So Cooper with the drive, and will go to the free throw line. He's had himself a pretty good first quarter. 13 points in the quarter. He completes the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Final shot coming up, final seconds. Here's Christopher. Christopher, a deep, long three. No good. Rebound. McDowell, and that is the end of the first quarter. The McEachern Indians have a 23-16 lead on the Mayfair Monsoons. You're watching the Thanksgiving shootout on SUV TV. Back inside Loving Good Arena on the campus of McEachern High School in Powder Springs, Georgia. Joe Hillsman, Mark Edwards, and Lewis Preston in our SUV TV courtside seats. Sharif Cooper with 13 of the McEachern Indian 23 points as they lead Mayfair 23-16. to 16. Josh Christopher with four. Mark, start it with you. First quarter thoughts. The game started slow just because of the delay in the game. These kids are warming up. Um, it's going to be a 100-point game. I see it. Coach Preston, first quarter thoughts? Uh, I thought it was very interesting how both teams probed each other out. Johnson playing really well for Mayfair right now. Sharif Cook is doing his thing. So I'm curious to see some of the other guys that are going to need to step up for both of these teams. Cooper makes his move and drives and scores. Sharif Cooper with 15 in the contest now. If you score on Sharif Cooper, he is coming right back at you. And now look at him. Now he's gone Dior Johnson. Around the screen, Johnson below the foul line, floats it up good. Johnson is not about that life, though. No he's duck got 12 season. points, and he wants all of that. There is no duck season in this gym tonight. There is no ducking in this gym tonight. Cooper worked on defensively now by D.J. Brown. Stepped through a traveling violation called on Sharif Cooper. Yeah. 
We finally got the crowd into it now, huh? Oh, yeah. D.R. Johnson now hands it over to Christopher. Christopher across the timeline. The left-hand dribble is belt high. Quick move. Spin below the foul line. Jump fading off. No. Board is swallowed up by the Indians, and here they come in transition. A four-point lead for the McEachern Indians and a steal. The thievery by James Claybrook and blew the layup. McDowell gets it and the foul. Good theft by James Claybrook, but could not finish on the other end. And the foul given will go through free throws as they are well over the limit. Foul on Clay Brooks. His first team is over the limit. And Coach Tony Davis stands up and looks over at this, talks to a myth of ref. The crowd is now beginning to come to life behind us when we are in our SUV TV courtside seats with the student section right behind us. McDowell, first free throw, no good. He's two of three from the free throw line today. The McEachern Indians coming in at 80.2 points per game offensively through the first four games of the season. McDowell, no good. Christopher on the glass for Mayfair. Knocked away underneath. Mayfair dunked it home as Josh Christopher. This is what I, I like this kid, number 20. This kid is not running from competition. Oh, shot bothered and blocked. He's checking Sharif Cooper full court. That's basketball, people. That's basketball. Uh-oh, something bad about to happen. Something Jumper bad about to happen. Oh, by Johnson, no. And the foul was called. So Dior Johnson drew the foul. He'll go to the free throw line. He has played with an edge. Three of three from the free throw line today, and that'll be the fourth team foul on the Indians. I need more teams from the state of California to come out here and play because we got this debate going on. I think right now we run basketball around the country. So we need more of these games. We need more challenge games like this. I need Sierra Canyon to come out here next year. We want all the smoke you got to offer around the country. Johnson free throw is good. Second one is good. So Dior Johnson now right now bringing the hard hat. It is a two-point lead for the McEachern Indians and Sharif Cooper across the timeline. The belt high dribble. He's going to drive all the way, put it up off the window and score. Wow. Sharif Cooper, another drive. He has 17. Tough finish right there. Wow. Great job right here. Tough finish. Mayfair preseason number two. St. John Bosco has that number one rep. But the interesting thing about Mayfair, they have three teams that they will face in that top ten. They go home and face Los Alamitos, who's got Caden Kent and David Okadeki. So they will be coming for them as well and going back and trying to defend that Division 2A title. Nuggets. Got more Nuggets to drop? Clay Brooks inbound, and Brown had to go back and chase it. This kid is a show right here. Johnson works around the screen, gets to the elbow, now pops it back out to Shahid. Shahid now good ball moving in the corner. D.J. Brown, a corner three bottom. D.J. Brown, a corner three. He has five in the contest. 29-27. Oh, the, whole, the whole building's about to stand up right now. The whole building's about to stand up right now. Sharif Cooper going against, oh, my, Josh Christopher. Cooper air ball as he on a step through, and it's a turnover. 29-28, Mayfair trailing by one. Josh Christopher has moved to the point guard spot. This is An opportunity to take the lead. You got to love Sharif Cooper. He's not ducking anybody. He's checking whoever is supposed to be whoever. Let's go. No duck season here. Cooper working on Christopher. Christopher a long three. No rebound. Long outlet pass to Cooper. Cooper's going to catch it. Cooper goes up. It did not go. They fight for the rebound. It comes off. And now here's Johnson. Johnson's running. Uh -oh. He's got Christopher uh -oh. on the alley. Oh, no. Rebound is going to be brought out. There's DJ Brown up. No. Fight for the board. And they bring it out. And it goes out of bounds. Now, let's give Cam McDowell his props. He just went up in the air, one of the highest jumping guys in the country. Wow. Take a look at our SUV TV instant replay. The alley with no oop. And he kept going up. McDowell now will come across the timeline, worked on defensively by Clay Brooks. McDowell on the drive, flipped it up with the right hand. That foul is offensive. Cam McDowell, turnover. 4.34 remaining in this second period. 
We got people from all over the country listening right now. I got my man Kashif Pratt out there in New York City listening. I got guys in Cali listening. The whole state of Georgia is listening and watching on SUV TV. This is a game. Christopher's pass almost was lost and out of bounds, but Brown saved it. Here's Johnson worked on defensively by Brady. Oh, wait a minute. Trying to size him up. Step back. No, Top didn't. side three. Front iron. Oh. Did not get the roll. Rebound comes off to the Indians. They'll come in transition as we come up on four minutes. Cooper. Excuse me. Euro me. stepping to the hoop, and he was fouled. So Sharif Cooper will go to the free throw line again. Sharif has what we call a bag. His bag is full of things. Moves, shots, finishes. But as he takes and makes that transition to the college level, the way he just came downhill right there, that's fine, right? I like to see more of that pull-up, Jay, 15 mm. to 17 feet. You know why? Because it's going to save him from getting uh, – Those charges? No, it's going to save him from getting hurt because mm. you're going to be playing against some men. Grown men. Right. Yeah. You saw Dayton in Kansas, right? And the Grown Maryland? men. Yeah, exactly. And at the college level, you use that first one to make a statement. Yes. So. Free throws are good from Sharif Cooper. Cooper, 10 of 11 from the free throw line in the contest. He has 19 points, 31 to 28. Not saying he might not get it, but he may drop 40 tonight. I'm looking for 50. Here's Court. Christopher, Christopher now worked on defensively by Brady. They shut it off at the top, so D.J. Brown pulls the three. It caroms off, and McDowell gets the board quickly up ahead to Brady. Brady going to hesitate, worked on by Clay Books. He drives up with the right hand and scores. He's All awake right. now. Yeah, he's awake. He's awake. You said he got off to a slow start, but he was going to wake up at some point. The scoreboard is jacked up the score, but they pushed it out now. It should be 33-28. to 28. 3.31 to go here in this second quarter. Joel Hillsman, Mark Edwards, Lewis Preston, and our SUV TV courtside seats. And that will be Josh Christopher now going to the free throw line for the very first time. I like how Josh Christopher likes to force the action, not settle for jumpers all the time. I'm looking for him to knock down some mid-range shots right now. That's what I'm looking for. That's a part of his game. I'd love to see him, you know, develop. Oh, the fans are in, the crowd is into it now. They're, they chanting, overrated. they're chanting oh. overrated, and he chanted it as well while he was at the free throw line. He splits them. He's a gamer. He has he seven that. points in the contest. The scoreboard, though, is, is not right. Uh oh, here they go. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Be careful, Josh. Christopher working on Cooper. Cooper tries to attack the baseline and does. Christopher gets the rebound. Christopher with a elbow there that was not called. Now he's going to turn on the Jets and go to the hoop and add the cookies taken away from him. Christopher turns, short corner jumper. It is no good. He has struggled from the field in this contest. McDowell now bringing it downhill. McDowell all the way left. Good. A Sunday stroll. Cam McDowell right down the lane. He did a great job of keeping his head up on the dribble, surveying everything, and was able to get it all the way to the basket. Open three. Clay Brooks, no. Out of bounds. There has to be an error with the scoreboard across the way now. And I think now we're going to have them take a look at it. The officials now get together. So just a message to all the kids out there watching this program. You guys got to work on your jump shot. You got to work on your shooting. You can be as athletic as possible. But unless you can shoot the basketball, when you go to college, it will not happen for you. This is a shooter's game. There's too much length. There's too much athletic ability out here for young kids to think they're just going to stroll to the basket in college. You got to develop that now. A full timeout was called by Mayfair. They have adjusted it. It is 35 to 29. And this timeout brought to you by SUV TV. Watch SUV TV whenever and wherever you want. Streaming live and on demand. The SUV TV app is available on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. You can also visit the SUVTV.com to watch full game broadcasts, replays, and select original content. The SUVTV.com. It's been very interesting to see the back and forth that's going on. Sharif Cooper is once again showing you why he's one of the premier guards in the country. Really liking the D.O. Johnson. Uh, Christopher's going to be fine and everything. But once again, Randy Brady has stepped up. 
uh, for for McEachin. And it's going to be interesting to see who's that other guy or two that can step up potentially for Mayfair. They want to stay in this game. Cooper passes in the corner out of the timeout, and it is a turnover. And now we'll see. They'll say it was deflected it was. by Mayfair, so it will be McEachern basketball. Clay Brooks, Christopher, Shahid, DJ Brown, and Devin Lane, the five on the floor for the monsoons of Mayfair. McDowell spins, lost his footing, knocked away, and a steal. Christopher in transition, dunked it home and missed it home. Clay Brooks had it knocked away from behind. Christopher in the corner, three ball, good. Wow. Josh Christopher. You see where wow. he took off from? Yeah. I, I saw him miss to, it, too. I thought he was going to have to finger roll that. 35-32, two minutes to go. Cooper lost it. Jump ball. McEachern basketball. Coach Thompson is upset as he's giving instruction to McDowell and to Brady. 35-32, 158 to go second quarter. And they're giving it to Mayfair. The possession was yeah. to Mayfair. And now they change it and say the possession goes to McEachern. Oh. This is the stuff that drives me crazy. Agree. Inbound, looking into Cooper. One dribble, turns front of the rim, good. He's got 21. Now that's too easy right there. I don't care who you are. Five-point game. Clay Brooks working with it now. To Lane, to Christopher. Worked on by Brady. Christopher, jumper, no good. Never follows his shot. Rebound comes off. Here's Brady. Brady on the break. Brady goes up. Christopher, meet me at the rim. No, a foul call on Josh Christopher. His third foul. Wow. That's an easy foul call, y'all. His athletic ability is through the roof. Came on the block. Yeah, got him on the body. I think I would have let that go, though, Coach Preston. I'll let it go. Let him play. Three fouls now on Christopher Brady at the free throw line. That's his first made free throw of the day. I'm talking to two dudes who played below the rail. So, no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just messing with y'all. Right? <laughs> Back iron, split him. Rebound nice underneath. Ball. That shot was bothered and blocked by Christopher. Now, note, Christopher has three fouls. Clay Brooks now gives it to Lane. Lane goes baseline, a little teardrop floater, no good. Bobby Moore gets the board. Moore coming back quickly this way. Goes behind the back. 70 seconds. Moore now back out to McDowell. Now to Cooper on the McEachern logo. Got to be careful right here. He can pick up a fourth. He can pick up a fourth. Cooper drives. Left-hand lay is good. You had to let him go. You got to. You got to. Lead pushed out to eight now. Cooper with 23. Drive. Short. Rebound comes off to the Indians. And here's Cooper with 45 seconds. Coop downhill. Cooper all the way. Layup no. Rebound underneath. Fight for it. He'll go to the free throw line. The foul will be on Mayfair and DJ Brown. His third. So Brown with three. Gilroy with three. Christopher with three. Mayfair in all kinds of foul trouble. They got some more players on the bus. They better, the, they better suit the coach up. And then Tony Davis still may have some game left now. Yeah. Nah. Cooper. Nah, if you're trying to check Sharif Cooper. Free throw. Sharif will tear that man's ACL. <laughs> good. Both of the free throws are good. Cooper with 25 in his first half. That's a show. Christopher across the timeline with 32 seconds. Goes around the screen. Picked up defensively by Brady. A bevy of dribble moves. Spins it to the right side. Now here's a pull-up jumper from 15. Hill of the rim, no good by Shahid. Rebound to Moore. And they'll hold for one shot now as D.J. Brown comes and picks up Cooper as he crosses the timeline. Cooper lost it. Christopher pulls up for three to beat the horn, and it will not count. An entertaining first half that sees the McEachern Indians have a 42-32 to 32 lead 
over the Mayfair Monsoon, Sharif Cooper with 25 points. Time out. These words right here. The SUV TV.com. CP3 Rising Stars Camp. SUV TV's 2019 NBA Draft Day coverage. Anthony Edwards' collegiate decision presented by the Georgia Hoop Circle on SUV TV. SUV TV brings the game to the audience. You give a better focus on the actual game at hand. Sometimes you could tell it's just a running camera by itself sitting there. But with SUV TV, it's more of a personal experience. Just the exposure. Being able to see games that you normally wouldn't be able to see, not only here locally, but across the country. Those angles make you pick up different things as a coach, as an evaluator. They're giving you great quality, nobody talking in the background. I think it, it, it brings basketball to the forefront. Whether it's a family member that lives in a different state, they can, they can watch the game, or just bringing in more coverage for these players, or if it just allows us to raise more money for something like Susan G. Komen. And so I think this event has grown because you guys have been a part of it the whole entire time. SUV TV has given a different light to kids that don't always get the best exposure. The commentary that goes along with the games, I think is always interesting. <laughs> That's down. Oh, yes, sir. It brings something to the table that no other streaming aspect can bring, uh, no matter how hard they try right now. Tom Avian Williamson at the buzzer. That yes, is how man. you get the Peachtree Corners Invitational started. And that will do it. Thanks for joining. Add a little sugar. Honeysuckle and a great Just get on the bread and you mix low and stay low. Right? Whatever you're doing now, make sure you sit down. Yeah, sit down, shoulders high, shoulders high. Now when you come off the bridge, come off the bridge. So you get your point of contact when you're about to change it. That's how low you need to be. Boom, and then you're gone. These are all the makings of you. Welcome you back inside of Loving Good Arena on the campus of McEachern High School, Powder Springs, Georgia. In our SUV TV courtside seats, Joel Hillsman, Lewis Preston, and Mark Edwards as the McEachern Indians hold a 42-32 lead over the Mayfair Monsoon. Sharif Cooper with a game-high 
25 points right now. The headliner on the other side is Josh Christopher for Mayfair, but he only has 10. D.R. Johnson, big effort, 14. But the problem with Mayfair is the fouls. Bowers, three. Christopher, three. Brown, three. Johnson, two. They better get into a zone for a minute or something. I, I said that, I said that uh, midway near the end of the first quarter. They've got to change up because all McEachin's doing, being led by Sharif Cooper, is just winding up, driving and getting paint touches and forcing the referees to make calls. So you've got to make some adjustments here, whether it's a matchup, whether it is a straight 2-3, two, I don't care, a 1-2-2, two, two, whatever you want to call it. They've got to keep them out of the paint here in the second half. But from, I guess that's from a coach's perspective and a winning perspective. I love the fact that they came out here and they said, we're going to play man-to-man -man defense and we're going to let these guys, you know, uh, settle this on the court. I can respect that and as well. I, and I don't mind that, Mark. Tactically, yeah. that's understandable. But yeah. now you got to adapt. Yeah, you got to win. Try to win. Johnson and Mayfair move left to right as you view it in the black threads with the white numbers. And Johnson attacks no. Rebound comes off. Inside to Bowers, who goes up and could not get it to score. Keith Williams on the glass for the McEachern Indians. Williams, Cooper, McDowell, Brady, and Moore, the five that started for the Indians. Zone defense from Mayfair with Johnson, Brown, Christopher, Shahid, and Bowers on the floor for the Mayfair Monsoons. In the corner, Randy Brady, three ball, rattles out, rebound, Scott for and brought down by Dior Johnson. Johnson gets it up ahead to Christopher. Christopher on the attack, now parallels and spins it to the left side. Shahid, a three on the way, it's no good. Rebound off to Cooper. Cooper in transition, stops, pop a shot, three ball, no. Both teams starting slow in this second half as well. Shahid on the break. Up ahead to Johnson. Johnson circles to the middle. It was blocked by Williams. He gets the board. He leans in. It's blocked again by Williams. And then Williams lets him know something and goes and claps in his face. Well, Keith Williams had to spend some time on the bench there in that first half, but now comes in immediately in the second half and gets a block. And McEachin wants possession of the basketball no, and will get it. That's right. That's right. It was off Mayfair. Josh Christopher last season, 25.5 points per game, six and a half boards, three and a half assists, and shot it at a 46% clip. Has struggled in the season opener right now for Mayfair. They work it around. Bobby Moore, the jumper, no. Skying for the board is Christopher. Christopher going to push it and go behind the back. He has three fouls, took contact, goes up and scores. You want to know when he gets low and he starts at that power move, you know who he reminds me of? I'm going way back on y'all now. Brian Reese used to play mm. in North Carolina. Mm. Time, time. Oh, yeah. New York City legend. Yes, sir. Cross court pass to McDowell. McDowell now top side to Brady. Three on the way. Stripped the That's a three ball from Randy Brady. Yeah, Riverside Hawks, man. I remember that guy. Randy Brady, that's his third three, isn't it? It is, it is, his third triple, indeed. 45. <laughs> 34. Coming up on two minutes gone by, 6.07 exact in this third quarter. Jim now back has a restless feel to it just a little bit. Johnson in the corner, pulls the three. It was deflected. Bowers rebounded it back out to Johnson. He's worked on defensively by Brady, step back, 16-footer, front iron, foul. Foul will be on Brady, his second, team's first, and at the free throw line will be Dior Johnson. Johnson, a very positive day from the free throw line so far. He's 5 of 5, 6 of 6. I'll tell you one thing, for it being, quote-unquote, Black Friday, when well, you're supposed to be shopping, they, they watching the game here in this Georgia. This basketball Friday. Yeah, this, this, this basketball season for us in Georgia. 45 to 36 lead now at nine. Cooper into the full court. Zone defense. Coach Tony Davis now. And Coach Preston, you knew he was going to have to do something. The pass knocked away. He knows what he's doing, though. He has a CIF championship. Mm -hmm. He has a CIF coach of the mm -hmm. year. In his 13th year, 26-7 and seven last year, lost to Chino Hills 
and Chino Hills went on to win the CIF last year. Inside, Williams, no good. Rebound ripped off by Christopher, who's running it in transition. Christopher had it knocked away from behind. They fight for it on the floor. Bobby Moore call. He's calling a timeout, Mr. Ref. Mr. Ref is looking at the bench versus looking at the player he already has on glasses. Is Lynn Crafters open today? He, oh my goodness, we're sitting seven feet from him and they called timeout and he did not give it to him. Christopher, three, bottom. Should have been an air one. Yeah. I do not believe what I just saw that the ref didn't oh, see. Oh, Brown a gets a the Joe board. Buck. A Joe Buck. Old Joe Buck. I like it. He turned and looked at the bench, and the player is in his face saying timeout. Rebound back tapped out now to Shahid. Shahid steps into a left wing three. It hill of the rim. No. Rebound hit the floor, and now Brady gets it. Gives it to Cooper. Cooper with 25 in the contest. In the corner. McDowell, three ball. Mm. It is off. Moore, the rebound, goes up strong, count it, and the foul. Bobby Moore, his second field goal, and he'll go to the free throw line for his very first time today. It is now an eight-point lead. He's giving them some extra hustle points and extra energy right there. That's about his third or fourth offensive rebound so far in this game. Free throw is good, so he makes the three-point play. He led them in scoring the other night with 18 points. They have victories over Berkmar. South Cobb, they put up 101 points on North Paulding and have a victory over Pebble Brook. Nationally, they have Marshall coming up, Mount Verde, Hoop Hall, and the City of Palms. Drive, took Travel. contact, a traveling violation, too many steps. On to your Johnson. One interesting fact, Mark Edwards, I didn't know if you knew this or not, but Sharif Cooper, if he goes down and just hits his average at City of Palms, he will become the all-time leading scorer in City of Palms history. Oh, wow. Three ball, Brady, no good. Rebound to Christopher, outletting. Here comes Johnson. Cooper's going to challenge him, and a foul call. Do you realize who you're sitting beside, right? The I man with the nuggets. I don't think you know. The man with the nuggets, apparently. At the free throw line I'm now not, not will be Dior Johnson. Free throw is good from Johnson. We want to welcome everyone across all the platforms of SUV TV into Loving Good Arena as Dior Johnson makes both free throws. He has been a very, very bright spot for the Mayfair squad. I really like him, how he plays. Young sophomore, 48 to 41. It's a seven-point McEachern Indian lead. McEachern in the white. They're moving right to left as you view it. I think they're going to play. They're going to sit in this zone for the rest of this quarter, and then fourth quarter comes, they're going to let them run. Well, D.R. Johnson just picked up his fourth foul. Yeah. And Bowers has it, too. Cooper now drops a triple. His first field goal here in the second half, Sharif Cooper. Ten-point lead now. Largest lead of the day for the McEachern and Indians. Shot the passing lane, Cooper, and could not get the steal. I will give Sharif um, this credit. I know people have questioned um, him on defense, but he stepped up to the challenge. He's guarded Josh Christopher. He's guarded... Uh, Dio Johnson, he's guarding whoever comes his way. So here's something you can't teach, right? Do you see the explosion off of his two feet for that 17-foot uh, jump shot? Yeah, that's because he that, starts that, low. That, that's that's low. genetics. Yeah. Foul will be called on Rodney Gilroy. That'll be his fourth. So Johnson has four. Gilroy has four. Bowers has four. Christopher has three. Wow. Bring it back bad members on Hawks Naismith. Bobby Moore free throw is good. 91 free throws in a basketball game. I don't think Mark Edwards even just heard what I said. He didn't. Nah, I ain't, I ain't heard nothing you said. I'm ignoring it. <laughs> <laughs> that means he heard he, oh, exactly. Hey. Hey, Angel Hernandez, a senior now, checks hey. into the contest, number 24 for Mayfair. Oh, this is going to be interesting. He's picking up on Williams, Johnson, and Christopher, along with Shahid. 
and Brown. The five on the floor for Mayfair. Drive by Johnson, and he was fouled on the shot. So they're going to try and attack. They have three team fouls now each side. This foul will be on Braden Sparks, who's checked in, young sophomore who got some quality minutes at points during the last season run of 32-0 for the McEachern Indians. Last season for Mayfair, 26-7, as I mentioned. A very good run over the last two years. Josh Christopher right at 20 points per game, six boards, three assists, and three steals in the last 55 games. Hmm. Needed those two free throws right there by Johnson. Oh, boy. Cooper's pass was knocked away. Out of bounds. You know, I talked earlier about, uh, about Quanzo Martin being here. Got Rashard Berno down there. So this is the Lewis Preston portion of the broadcast where he does, you know, like your celebrity role. I mean, you know, assistant of Arizona State. I love it, Coach. I was kind of just trying to get you a sponsor no, of some no, kind of I, way. I appreciate it. <laughs> the Tyson Holly Farms, one of them want to sponsor that. We good. My number's on the website. It is. Bobby Moore going to the free throw line. Moore is three of three from the free throw line, and he has seven points. He's doing all the dirty work. Exactly. The teacher's going to need uh, to win this game. This is, this is the kind of game, if you're Coach Thompson, you go back and look at it, and you go back and look at every single offensive rebound that Bobby Moore has, something positive has happened in regards to every time he's got an offensive rebound. Yeah, he's, one of the, he's what we call a glue guy. You need him in the game. He's going to make winning plays. He's going to make hustle points. Largest lead for the Indians is 12 and a turnover. Sparks up ahead to Cooper. Cooper running, drives up the window and scores. So Sharif Cooper now has 30. He got a chance to get that 50 piece. Wow. Dior Johnson flies and scores. You got to keep him on the right arm, huh? Yeah. Long three, Cooper no good. Christopher swallows up the board. Christopher now on the attack, had it taken away. Brady was going for it. That's back-to-back -back possessions. He's almost came up with the cookies. Johnson, a deep 23-footer. No good. Rebound comes off the Sparks. Two minutes to go. Third quarter, 12-point game, and Cooper's in transition. Cooper all the way, flipped it up. It did not go. Big Hernandez gets the board off the bench, had it taken away, hits the deck, and goes out of bounds. Big Hernandez. It has been back-to-back 20-plus -back win seasons for Tony Davis. 26-7 and seven last year, 21-8 and eight prior to that. But he has had eight 20-win seasons in his previous 12 years at Mayfair. I want to see more of these California teams come out here in Georgia compete. That's what I want to see. My man Marcus Graz out there, I know he's listening to me. He said, I'm capping. He says, you know, I'm just talking junk here. You know. What do you think is the major difference? I, I have my opinion, but uh, since, it's a, since we are national, I am being very neutral. I'm not. You're not. But, I mean, there's some good, still some good ball that comes out of California. There's some great ball out but of California. But I think pound for pound pros. right now they're struggling. They got the most pros all time and currently. The state is big as the whole East Coast. <laughs> they do occupy an entire coastline over there, yeah. Chris I will say that. Falls off, no good. Now nah, let me let me stop. I, I'm working with Mark Edwards. It's getting me out of my professional form. As Cooper goes on the attack and is fouled. <laughs> There's been some great. I mean, during my coaching days, I don't think there was a better California team than uh, modern day out of Santa Ana. Nah. Uh, we, uh, 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 consistently. No. Still right. consistently. Yeah. Crenshaw. Crenshaw High well, School. That's it. Crenshaw another, High School. Another great one. Coach another Willie West. One. Another great one. Coach Willie West. That was my guy. Another great one as well. Gary McKnight with his uh, numerous wins and championships, as well as high-level college players and pros. Cooper makes both free throws. 
I need somebody from the West Coast to tell me what high school in California has the most pros. I wonder who has that kind of clout. Who, that's who, a, that's who, a good who question. Bring that up? Somebody tweet me. That's a good question. At M. Edwards B. Ball. Well, Mayfair has Josh oh, Childress, man. former Stanford and Atlanta Hawk. Really? He came from Mayfair. McEachern. Who does McEachern have? Well, Josh Smith went here for a minute. Yes. Did not graduate from here, but went here. Johnson, free throw good. Ended up going to Oak Hill, if I remember. That is correct. By the time he left here, he was already on his way. Played a lot of his pro ball right here in the city. Three out of the corner. Sparks, no. Rebound ripped off of the glass. Good job. Back up and in by Bobby Moore. We just talked about him. Hard hat lunch pail, Bobby Moore. That glue guy. Yeah. Christopher on the attack. The foul is offensive, and that will be That's the foul. his that third foul. Oh, really? Wait. Are they going to change it? Yeah. They're going to call a block. They're going to call a blocking foul on Bobby Moore instead. And mm. that is not going to go over well with Coach Mike Thompson. Coach Mike Thompson upset, beat Red, wanting an explanation on, as to why. And is not agreeing with the explanation given to him from the referee. Sharif Cooper got 34, and we still got another quarter to go. I'm looking for that 50 ball. I'm looking for that 45. My man, my man Kashif in New York, he says Sharif should end with about 45. I'm looking for that, that, that elusive 50 ball out here. That's what I want to see. The last guy I've seen score baskets like this, as far as a guard, were well, the last two. Colin Sexton would score the ball really well, and then my man Ryan Harrow, he lit the state of Georgia on fire his last two years. He would regularly hit you for 45, 47. Who else out there from George do we remember as far as guards in the past 10 years? That Lou was Williams. Williams. Lou. Lorenzo uh, Brown. Ant-Man. Lorenzo Brown. Yeah, Low Brown. That's, 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 that's the baby brother right there. Anthony Edwards. He's lighting up college basketball right now. I don't think people believe that he was going to be that good. Because I can remember the ESPN guy, Mike Smith, coming on talking about the number one pick in the draft is going to be LaMelo Ball after seeing him play for one week, college basketball hadn't started yet, and then they got a little ant man. 33 points in one half. I've never seen that kind of performance in a college game per one half, and I watched Lenny Bias do it. Talk to me, coach. First of all, man, if you ever go mention Lenny Bias around me, hey. he put the special in special. Yeah, that, that was, and, that was uh, my hero. Was a... I still remember my brother coming in and telling me when he had passed away. I didn't believe him. I rolled over and went back to sleep, had to see it on the news. Mm. You know what? It took the Celtics 20 years to recover from that, too. That's right. Because I remember Larry Bird said he would go to rookie, rookie camp, training camp. If, if they draft him. Oh, my. Turnover. Combine that with Reggie Lewis. Absolutely. Mm. And it really did take them 20 years to get back to where – Hey, you, know, you, you know what it took. It, it took Malden, South Carolina, and Kevin Garnett. That's what it took, that defensive stalwart. Inside, tip in good from Josh Christopher. Well, we got to give Paul Pierce his due, too. He held it down until they can get those, those, those goons in there. Why they got to be goons? <laughs> Kevin Garnett's a goon. I don't care what you say. He's a goon. He's Free scary. throw. No good. He's just like that. He got it from Springfield Park in South Carolina. Layup, up and in good. Bobby Moore. Check it. Brady. Randy Brady. Brady. Whoa. Turnover. Yeah. And that'll be the end of the quarter. So the McEachern Indians hold a 65-51 to 51 lead over the Mayfair Monsoons. The fourth quarter is coming up next right here. The SUVTV.com. Add a little sugar, honeysuckle, and a great Just get on the bread and mix low and stay low. Right? Whatever you're doing now, make sure you. 
sit down. Yeah, sit down. Shoulders high. Shoulders high. Now when you come off the bridge, come off the bridge. So you get your point of contact when you're about to change. That's how long you need to be. Boom, and then you're gone. These are all the makings of you. Welcome you back. We welcome you back to the Thanksgiving shootout inside McEachern High School, Powder Springs, Georgia. Loving Good Arena. Joel Hillsman, Mark Edwards, Lewis Preston. As the fourth quarter is underway, the McEachern Indians have a 14-point lead. Now make it 16 as going baseline is Randy Brady. And I'll tell you, Randy Brady did get off to that slow start, but just like you said, Mark, he has heated up and he has been consistent for them. A solid 14 points for him. And after that deuce, give him 16. 16. Three is no good. Now here comes Cooper. Cooper pushing it in transition. Cooper, oh Spinderella goes up, and the shot was sent away by Elijah Sahin. Sharif Cooper with 34 points leading all scores, scores currently at the moment. That's the expensive seat. Got to catch that. Turnover. Braden Sparks is into the contest now. DJ Brown is in. And now here's Dior Johnson back in. He sat out the last few moments of that Third quarter in foul trouble from the first half. Mm. Shahid rattles home a three. And that's how he started the game, if mine serves me correctly. You are correct. 13-point game, a minute gone by here in the fourth and final frame. Just like we talked about earlier, they had no choice with their foul trouble to have to go 2-3 zone. Dumped it off inside, and he was fouled. So Jens Rickert fouled, and he will go to the free throw line. Who's that foul on? Okay. Mm. So now we got an online debate going on. Oh boy. They're saying that uh Kemba Walker's Maui invitational performance was better than Anthony Edwards. I don't know about that. Coach. I'm going to agree. You know why? Really? Anthony Edwards lost the ball game. They didn't win, man. They did not win. They were down 28. It should not have been down 28. 33 in the second half was great. He's pulling those three. You're down that many points. They lost. Can we still say it's about winning and losing? Christopher, three, nice. good. I've been saying that, but I have my own I have my own theory in regards to that. And it's not player related. There's another three by Cooper in and out. Rebound off to Christopher. And then a three pointer to beat Chaminade at the horn. Chaminade plays tough in their tournament. They beat Virginia back in the days when they had Ralph Sampson and they were one number one in the Chaminade nation. is eight and ninety seven in that tournament. They as long as they beat you at a division one level, it, it counts. Another nugget. So the nuggets. I mean, how many people could pull out eight and ninety-seven? <laughs> Christopher That's three is no good. Rebound is ripped off by Rickard in the corner. That's why when you sit here and say Sharif has got thirty or forty or fifty, I know they've won. Yeah. I, I don't remember the last time he had thirty or forty and they lost. Well, he's never lost in this building, so you're definitely I'm talking about that. period. Yeah. This building, that building, wherever it's 95 feet and 10 foot baskets, layup good inside Sharif Cooper. Big buckets and a victory is definitely appreciated more than. Mark mm -hmm. Edwards has officially got my text line on fire. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, man. It's about yeah. the conversation. It's about the conversation. Well, see, I, I can't say that because I'm going to fall into that with you, and I'm trying to give a national perspective. I can't, I, I'm not going to get in that back and forth with you, but I know about the WCAC, and I'm going to leave it right there. 
I know way too much about it. And then the Chicago Public League. Well, let's talk. Well, come well, on, so man. I can go. I can go with Whitney Young. I can go with Morgan Park. I can take them anywhere. When you say the WCAC, is that a private school league? Yes. Okay. We still talking about basketball, though. Don't 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 start splitting them hairs it, with me. So don't it, do that. Don't do that. It's a don't. different conversation when you when you bring that kind of league in there. Understood. Public school versus private okay. school is a different conversation. Okay. You are correct. Just like prep school However, versus public school is a different conversation. That's what makes Georgia a special state overall is because of the infrastructure of the public schools is still very, very strong. If you want to play top basketball in the DMV, you really got to play WCAC. We understand that. So if you go public or private, there is not a private team in the state of Georgia that's going to leave this state and go hang with any of the privates in California, Illinois, Indiana, New York, or that metro, uh, the DMV. None in football or basketball, period. Georgia private schools are not on that level of those other private schools. Public school-wise, in some of those areas, they cannot touch Georgia. So don't start that debate. But if I want to play basketball, I'm going to take Gonzaga. I'm going to take Paul the Six. A, it becomes a social issue in the fact that exactly. some of these schools in Georgia won't allow that many athletes to come in just for being athletes. I'm but in go. WCAC, you're going to get guys on the basketball team we, that look like us. We're going to have to continue that debate uh, right now versus that 2-2-1. Bobby Moore did a great <laughs> job of splitting it, getting to the basket with a nice lay-in. 72 to 59, I'm sorry. I tried for four quarters. He's trying to hold it in. Don't hold it in. At the free throw line now will be Josh Christopher, who's up to 24 points. But in the essence, he's had to work very hard for those 24 points. Free throw good. I think that's the one thing, though, that we – excuse me, that's uh, De DeJore Johnson. He's got 24 as well. I think that's one of the things, though – you can start seeing. I think that's what makes the national events that much more better is because, especially in basketball, not so much in football, but in basketball because you can get some of those head-to-head -head matchups or some of those matchups to kind of see where you are. Like South Carolina, Dorman, they've got three straight championships. Dorman, you're not going to win state championship in Georgia. Keenan is very good. We're going to get to see them Boj Bojangles bash in another event. South Carolina has good basketball, but it's not right there. Then in North Carolina, you could you can talk about, I mean, we'll see Marathi and Prep this year. Okay, Greensboro Day is always known for something. Westland Collegiate Day has always been very good. Free throw good from Sharif Cooper. Cooper now with 37. I think that perspective – you know, even becomes even better when we put McEachern in the conversation because they're able to play against prep teams from around the country like the IMG or, you know, Oak Hill or whatever and still win those games. And they're a public school. Traveling by no, 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 no. He held his foot. That's a bad call. I thought he had enough glue on the bottom of the shoe. He had plenty of glue. Let's see what the replay says. Yeah, you only have to look at the replay. I wasn't a travel. <laughs> Defense now. Still layup, DJ Brown over the front of the rim. DJ Brown, 73, 63, 445 to go. Sparks has it, and now they bring it over to back to Sparks. Him and McDowell playing pitch and catch. Bobby Moore caught it, went to the hoop and scored. Bobby Moore, an athletic move from Bobby Moore. Wow, I did not see that in the repertoire right there. The glue guy. Oh. Jump stop, drive, Johnson good with 424 remaining in this fourth quarter. He's impressive to me. Yeah. 28 in the contest now. He has 28. Christopher has 24. Oh, it's only 15 Almost a old. steal. Oh. Possession out of bounds will be to the McEachern Indians. But all that being said, it's a 10-point game now. Very much so. 75-65 as we come up on four minutes to go in this fourth quarter. That's an easy call. The foul counts a lot even right now. It's 9-8. to eight. So it's a different game right now. 
Instead of instead of taking and reaching right there on that ball screen, just move your feet, get it about a about a 60 degree angle, and try to push him back to half court. Right? You can't get too far up at 90 degrees because he's quick enough to split you. You can't have it too open to where he can go around two of you, and all of a sudden he's playing four on two. Right? I mean, it's just it's. Just some simple things right there in regards to that Mayfair is going to continue to work on. Beautiful move. Wow. Interesting. I'm telling you, he has that Brian, he has that Brian Reese gear. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm looking at the move he just made. That's what I'm saying. It reminds me of Brian Reese from back in the day. Christopher completes the three-point play. Oh, get this shot out of here. Cam McDowell with a block. Get this shot out of here. Tim Kuko with a block. The basket is password protected by the McEachern Indians. 77 to 68 with 337 to go. We got athletes out here in the state of Georgia. That's one thing we have. Jumper, Johnson, no, board, McDowell, he swallowed it off the glass, and here they come with 3.28 to go. Up ahead, Bobby Moore, attack and a foul called on Christopher, and that will be his fourth foul. I wouldn't even jump for that one because he was already too far underneath the basket. One of the things that Coach Davis talked about going into the season with Christopher, he felt, especially last year before the playoff run, that he became more vocal and he became more of a positive example. We'll see how the season develops this season mm -hmm. for them if he'll be able to do that. Bobby Moore got a very quiet 16. Bobby Moore has, has brought the hard hat lunch pail today, missed the free throw. He split that one. Rebound comes off the Shaheed. 78 to 68. I know it's a 10 point ball game, but this game just has McEachern all over it. Christopher floats it in good. Steele, Crawford, saved to Gilroy, knocked away out of bounds. I just don't know. I, I don't want to harp on this, but the I think the early foul trouble so early in the game, first five minutes, you kind of have to go away from your from what you want to do or your game plan or your scout report as you went into it, right, Coach Preston? No, I totally agree with you on it, but I think one of the things that Mayfair, believe it or not, has done a great they've adjusted. And they've made some adjustments between changing up defenses and everything to where they've been, it's an eight-point game with just under three minutes ago, which is, you know, that's not that far. This could have been a 20-point game very easily. So I tip my hat to them for that. You know, Randy Brady, Bobby Moore, we knew what Sharif Cooper was going to do when he got out here. So uh, he's lived up to the hype. But I've been very impressed with those two guys with their lunch pail mentality. When they go back and look at this game, Mark, those two combined have probably given them anywhere from 10 to 14 extra possessions. Definitely, definitely. We have to credit the Mayfair coach for basically using his entire bench. Every single person over there yeah. has played. Because I thought at one time I was going to have to shoot up. <laughs> this time out brought to you by SUV TV. You take a look at our SUV TV Instant replay. Watch SUV TV whenever and wherever you want. Streaming live and on demand, the SUV TV app is available on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. You can also visit the SUV TV.com for full game broadcast, replays, and original content. Bobby Moore again with the hoop. Mm. Uh oh. Uh oh. Josh Christopher has a quiet 32, if we can say that. 80 to 73. Mm. Cooper now with 41. Christopher and Cooper in uh, the showtime back and forth one on one continues. 216 remaining. Question What position does Josh Cooper play in college? I think there are certain players out there that are positionless. 
Uh, I just think you have to put him in different positions to where he can take and attack you and get downhill for right now. If you go and go back and look at his jump shot a little bit, as he's taking that jump shot, his body's swaying back and forth. Once he gets accustomed and comfortable with that explosion straight up and down at the height, I mean, in a sense, it'll be game over. But I think you can put him in a variety of different spots. I like to see how his true ball handling ability is overall. Yeah. Cooper underneath goes up, and it was blocked by Christopher. Christopher running the break. They're trailing by seven, trying to make one last push. Teardrop float, no. Johnson got the rebound, no. They tip it, and Christopher comes away with it. Two minutes to go. Christopher pulls a left wing three. Back iron, no. Rebound to Brady. Brady now gives it over to Cam McDowell. McDowell crosses the timeline. McDowell going to drive, put it up. Blocking foul call. And it'll be two free throws coming up. I think you just got to let that one go. Well, at one point, they were not here, so yeah. they're letting us know they are here. Yeah. Cam McDowell, as now the crowd begins to head for the exits. At the free throw line, Cam McDowell has four points on the day. Make it five, and he's three of five from the free throw line. 83-75, an eight-point lead, which McKeetron has kept it right there. Seven to 12 points in this second half. Mm -hmm. They've kept it far enough away to where you just didn't think that Mayfair could make that run to get back into it. Although Mayfair, to me, has done a great job here in the second half. Arms length. Giving themselves an opportunity. It's a great way to put it. They've, and then, you know what? That's what champions do. They keep you at arm's length. They keep you at arm's length. Eighty seconds to go. Eighty-four seventy-five. And remember, SUV TV is your home for all of the greatest high school basketball and grassroots basketball. Holiday hoops giving continuing. And the turkey, the Thanksgiving shootout will continue here. Sharif Cooper misses the free throw. Looking at these stat lines, you know we got to point out that you know this team came all the way from California come out here and play the day after Thanksgiving, and they still put up a fight. Josh Christopher with 34 points. You know, not enough for Steve Cooper's 41, but, you know, definitely an admirable, you know, uh, performance. Drive, float by Johnson. No, Johnson got the board and put it back up. No, rebound. Yeah, Mayfair showed a lot of fight. Yeah. It's a team that I wouldn't want to mess with once they get under their skids. Remember, this is their first game of the year. Exactly. Let's, let's not forget that at all. I'm not forgetting that at all. And I'm like, I, I think they have such a high.